claw. Fruit bat. Oh, come on, calm down. Fruit bat. I'm not doing it anymore. Guys, basically what he was meant to say is that you can get brand new episodes of Deadly 60 every morning here on the CBC channel at 7.45. And if you missed that, it's repeated again in the afternoon at 4.30. Right now, Hobbes is scoring games. That's why we're doing this. Yeah. Oh, I get it now. Fruba! 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 Hello and welcome to Gory Games with me, Dave Lamb, him, Ratters Ratters, and him, the Blue Peter Cat. What? Whoa! <laughs> <laughs> Got you. Don't joke about the Blue Peter Catch Your Clown. His studio's only next door. <laughs> this is the show that separates out the cool cats from the scaredy rats. Oh, yes, I see what you did there. As we test their knowledge of horrible histories with quirky quizzes and gory games. So, let's meet today's horrible historians. Hi, I'm September. Hi, I'm Sol. Hi, I'm Morgan. Fantastic. There are the contestants. By way of a little warm-up game today, I thought we'd go back to nature with a wholesome Georgian party. Time. Really? Absolutely. Just picture the scene. It's 1764. We're in a tranquil Georgian farmyard. A cockerel crows in the distance. <laughs> Spring lambs chew the grass in a nearby field. <laughs> Chickens peck lazily at the grain from the dusty ground. <laughs> and along come our lovely contestants, ready to play the favourite game of Georgian aristocrat, Lord Huntingdon. Yes. It's time to play Hunt the Hen! Simply chase the chicken around the studio and the first to pull some feathers from his bottom wins! Release the hen! Three, two, no, one! No, no, no. Not on my watch. For heaven's sake, for once, I would just like to start this show without anything disgusting or upsetting happening. Thank you. Oh, brilliant. <laughs> I'm going to need a change of shirt now, aren't I? And someone better find out where he got that chicken from. I'm a naughty little rat. Right, September, Sol, Morgan, you are playing to win Year Spheres. Each Year Sphere contains a historical date, and at the end of the show, your Year Sphere dates will be added up, with AD dates being added to your total and BC dates being subtracted from it. So, if these were your Year Spheres, we'd add 1,215, then subtract 480, giving us a total of Rattus. Hmm? Oh, I do know, but I can't tell you. Why not? It's a secret. No, it isn't. It must be, otherwise you'd know already. I do know already. Then what is it? It's 735. All right, you've passed the test. It's 735. Oh, OK, thank you. At the end of the show, the person with the highest year score will win a unique historical prize. As chosen by yours truly. Yes, it's the kind of prize you couldn't even sell on eBay. Right, let's get cracking. And to find out who this round's about, it's over to the gory grid. It's the awful Egyptians. So, four questions on the awful Egyptians coming up now. The person who gets the most right wins the first year sphere. Your four Egyptian topics are Egyptian gods, hieroglyphics, pyramids and mummies. So, September, you get to pick first in this round. What's it going to be? Gods. Egyptian gods. Let's hear that question. The Egyptian god Sobek had the head of a crocodile. But what was he the god of? Was it A, death, B, eating, or C, water? Let's see those answers now, please. OK, so Morgan and Sol agreeing on A. September out on her own with C. Let's find out what the answer is. The answer is C. He was the Egyptian god of water. Though if there's one thing you don't want to find in your water, it's a crocodile. Or a sewer rat. Oi, I heard that. You were meant to. So, Sol, it's your turn to pick a topic. Mummies. Mummies. That is a prop question. This Ooh. is a pot of mummy's dust. Stuart King, Charles II of England, had a collection of mummies. He used to gather the dust and powder that fell off them. But what did he do with it? Did he A, rub it into his skin? Did he B, sprinkle it on his food? Or did he C, throw it at people he didn't like? Let's see those answers now, please. Everybody in total agreement on A. And you're all absolutely right. He did used to rub it into his skin. He thought the ancient greatness of the mummies would rub off on him. 
That is sick. Sick, 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 and not in a good way. <laughs> Morgan, it's your turn to pick a topic. Hieroglyphics, please. Hieroglyphics. Let's hear that question. Ancient Egyptian scribes wrote things down in hieroglyphics. But what does hieroglyphics mean? A, holy scribbles, B, special doodles, or C, sacred engraving? So is that A, B, or C? Everyone in total agreement. Let's see what the answer is. The answer is C. Hieroglyphics means sacred engraving. Is that sacred as in, holy cow, what on earth is that supposed to mean? No, it isn't, Rattus. OK, with the scores, September 3, Sol 2 and Morgan 2, we have one question left in this round, so it's all still to play for. The final topic is pyramids, and here is the question. Here's what I want to know. How many pyramids are there in Egypt? A, 3, B, 15, or C, more than 100? Do you think that's A, B, or C? OK, the girl's agreeing on B. Sol out on his own with C. Let's find out what the answer is. The answer is C. There are more than a hundred pyramids in Egypt. Yeah, there are more pyramids on Egyptian soil than I've got flea bites on my bottom. <laughs> but only just. Yeah, I was going to say, it must be close. And talking of close, it's very close here. We finished that round with September and Sol tied. Fingers on your buzzers, please, because we're going to the tie-break question. Beginning with the letter H, Egyptians believed that in the underworld, to tell whether you'd led a good life, which of your organs was weighed? <laughs> Sol. Heart. Heart is absolutely right. So, Sol, you have won the quiz. It's time to choose your year sphere from our trolley wally. I'll have you know I'm not a trolley wally. I'm a sewage expert. Oh, so <laughs> much better. Be warned, Sol. One of these year spheres could contain a Stone Age date worth a few million minus points. Push, 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 Preferably one of the shiny ones. Is that the one you want? Yes. Good. <laughs> so, winning the quiz means that Sol is automatically through to play the Egyptian game. But will he be alone or will the others get to play too? Let's find out. <laughs> it's an all-play brainy game, which means all of you must get down that time sewer. Lead off, Morgan. Woo! Excellent. Off you go, Sol. There you go, September. When they died, pharaohs didn't really go for the small engraved gravestone thing. They were more into the two million massive stone block thing. It's time to play Pyramid Puzzle. Your challenge to build a pyramid. Just work out which massive block goes where. First to finish wins the year sphere. So ready, steady, get building. And here we go then with Pyramid Puzzle. And the idea here, Rattus, is to get the big blocks on that base, isn't it? That's right, the clues in the title, Dave. They have to build. A pyramid. Well, oh, that's a nice big piece there from Sol. September's looking a little small for me, though. Of course, things can go very, very badly wrong on this game, uh, particularly if you think you can squeeze a piece into a gap that just isn't there. Now, this is interesting. September's realised her mistake and she's gone with the bigger bits. Sol having just basically just picking all the bits up and throwing them around at the moment, which is an interesting technique. And now Morgan looks as if she's close to finishing her ground floor. That looks good. Now, that looks very good, but wait a minute. I think if you look at the back closely, I'm not sure that's right. I think that Morgan may think she's got the base finished there, Rattus, but I'm not sure that she has. What do you think? It's poking out over the edge there, and if your bottom layer isn't parallel with the bottom edges of the plinth, then that's it. We're on to a hiding to nothing. You are, and you've got to take into account the slanting sides of the pyramid, and I'm not sure she's done that fully, so Morgan could be barking up the wrong tree there, I think. And September wrestling with another huge piece. Now, that is what you call a base. She has completed the ground floor of her pyramid. Sol is in all sorts of trouble here. And so's Morgan. There's jaggedy bits sticking out. If you look closely there, that, however, looks very encouraging, and September, for me now, is well on her way to winning this challenge, Rattus. Sol still is struggling. There's a great big rift right in the middle of his ground That's it. Block. September's got the second yeah. layer. She's got the second layer. You've called it correctly, my furry friend. She's got that second layer. On she goes now for the third layer, and that's going to take not very long at all, shortly to be followed by the top piece, I'm thinking, and there it is. There it is. There it is. It's a perfect pyramid from September. She does a little leap, then a half spin. It's a victory celebration. Oh, and Morgan's livid. Not really. 
Welcome back. Well played. It's September. Help yourself to a year sphere, why don't you? Morgan, how did you find it? I found it great fun. Did you? Excellent. You had a piece in the base, didn't you? It was the, it was the other one. The one I put on top was the one on the bottom. Good effort. Very good effort. So, how did you find it? Hard. Difficult. One word, yeah. hard. But September, what a magnificent pyramid you constructed. Did you enjoy it? Yeah, it was really fun. But I did put all the small ones on there to wipe it completely off and put the massive one on, so... Well done for doing that, because it meant that you won. The Great Pyramid of Giza was one of the so-called Seven Wonders of the World. It was finished around 2560 BC and weighs about six and a half million tonnes. So, are you one of the Seven Wonders of the World, Dave? Where are you going with this? Well, you're very old and heavy. Just try to ignore him if you can. It's what I do. <laughs> Moving on, on to round two. And to find out what's up next, it's over to the gory grid. It's the frightful First World War. Four questions again. Here are your all important World War I topics dogs, gas masks, bombs, and hankies. So, Sol, it's your turn to pick first this time. What do you fancy? Gas masks. Gas masks. Let's hear that question. True or false? No animals were given gas masks. Let's see those answers now, please. Well, look at that. All three in complete agreement. Everyone thinks it's false. Are they all right or are they all wrong? It's false! Horses were key to the war effort, so special gas masks were made for them. Morgan, it's your turn to pick a topic. Um, dogs, please. Dogs, you say? Let's hear that question. True or false? German shepherds were renamed Alsatians as a result of the war. So is that true or false? Well, all in total agreement once again, all thinking it's true this time. Are they right or are they wrong? It's true! We were at war with Germany, so they were renamed not to sound German. I'm not very fond of Alsatians, but they love me for dinner. Obviously not picky eaters. <laughs> September, your turn to pick a topic. Hankies, please. Hankies. That is a question. From my esteemed colleague, Mr. Rattus Rattus. Yeah, uh, thank you. <clears throat> True or false? If you're caught in a gas attack in World War One without a gas mask, you should wee on your hanky, tie it around your mouth and nose, and breathe through it. Mm, interesting. Let's see your answers now, please. Look at that. All in total agreement once again, all going for true this time. What's the answer, Rattus? Oh, dear, oh, dear, oh, dear. It's true! <laughs> Although what you did if you didn't need a wee, I don't know. Three points each, one question remaining, so this may well decide the round. It's a question on bombs. Let's hear what it is. Is this true or false? During World War I, until they were given bombs to drop, pilots dropped bricks out of their planes. Let's see those answers now, please. Total, total agreement. Once again, let's find out if they're right. It's true. Yep, it's horrible, but it's true. So, look at that. We've ended up with a three-way tie, everyone getting maximum points in that round. That means it's fingers on buzzers. Beginning with the letter F, name the medical condition caused by the freezing cold in the trenches that could make soldiers' toes oh. drop off. <laughs> September. Frostbite. Frostbite is the right answer, September. Congratulations. Help yourself to a year sphere. Very good. Well done. You qualify for the first World War game. But will you be alone or will everyone get to play too? Let's find out. It's a single-player brainy game. So, September, off down the time sewer on your own. <laughs> Nowadays, most army regiments have an animal mascot. For example, the 3rd Battalion of Royal Horrible Historians, that's us, has a rat. I'd salute, but my arms are too short. Dear, oh, dear. It's time to play... Marvellous Mascots! Your challenge today is to work out which five of these are genuine World War I lucky mascots. Choose five and move them to the real board, then touch the stuffed dog with a medal. Is that really the best we can do? Oh, well. To find out how many you've got right, keep trying new combinations until you've got all five, but you've got to be quick. You're against the clock. And your time starts now. <laughs> So, September attempts to play Marvellous Mascots, and what's her first choice? Let's have a look at that, Rattus. That's Private Darby the Ram. Well, let's see. It remains to be seen, doesn't it? Some of these names are hilarious, aren't they? Corporal Charlie the Cockroach, Rattus. <laughs> <laughs> Corporal Charlie the Cockroach. He's actually quite a good flute player. Bella and Bertha the Cows go up next, uh, then Taffy, Taffy the Goat. 
Yeah, Chapley the Fourth there, uh, actually. Uh, sounds a bit Welsh, really, doesn't it? Or am I just stereotyping there? Yes, probably. Please don't upset the Welsh ratters. We're in enough trouble as it is. Stubby the dog up finally, then. How's she got on? <laughs> You have four, Oh, she's right. got four. Now, what one's she going to take away? She's taken away the cockroach. Off goes Corporal Charlie the cockroach, dragging his tiny little flute behind him. The springbok goes up there, Nancy the springbok, and that you gives her the game. Right. Already, look at what a celebration that was. Textbook. September, it was an absolute triumph. Help yourself to another year, Sphere, why don't you? You were quite right. Blue the kangaroo and Corporal Charlie the cockroach were the made-up ones. The lucky mascots of the Scots Guards were two cows called Bella and Bertha. They were the only survivors from a herd that had been hit by a bomb. So the Scots Guards got two mascots and all the mints they could eat. <laughs> That's inappropriate. Yeah, sure. OK. Over to the gory grid to find out what's up next. It's the measly Middle Ages. Four questions, as always, and here are your four Middle Ages topics. Cures, tournaments, 1066, and laws. So, Morgan, it's your turn to pick first this time. What's it going to be? 1066, please. 1066. Is this true or false? At the Battle of Hastings in 1066, the Norman troops were led into battle by a man who was singing and juggling. So, is that true or is that false? Interesting. The girls agreeing on false. Sol has gone for true. Let's find out who's right. It's true. Yeah, he was called Evo Tyfair, and he was William the Conqueror's jester. He charged at the Saxons while juggling, and obviously he was killed immediately. So I guess the Saxons had the last laugh after all. <laughs> what an idiot. <laughs> OK, September, it's your turn to pick a topic. Can I have laws, please? Yes, you can. And that is a prop question. Ooh! <laughs> Rattus loves those prop questions. OK, here is your question. True or false? One Middle Ages method for seeing if someone was guilty of a crime involved eating cake. They've all gone for true. They are absolutely right. That's absolutely right. It was true. The accused person would eat a slice of cake. If they choked on it, then they were guilty. Rattus, did you steal some of this cake? <laughs> No further questions, Your Honour. So, well done, everyone. You got that absolutely right. It's your turn to pick a topic, Sol. Cures. Cures it is. Let's hear the question. True or false, one Middle Ages cure for the Black Death involved jumping over a sewer. Is that true or is that false? Show me now. OK, Sol out on his own again with false. The girls agreeing with true. Let's find out what the answer is. It's false. But we thought one way to avoid catching the plague was to sit in a sewer. You see, the bad air of the plague is driven off by the worse air of the drains. <laughs> it makes perfect sense, doesn't it? Yeah, right. Well, to be fair, I spend much of my time sitting in a sewer and I've never died of the Black Death. Slight misunderstanding of how biology works there. But no misunderstanding from Sol. Even with one question left in this round, it's too late for the others. Sol has won the round. So, Sol, help yourself to another year sphere. Sol is through to play the Middle Ages game, but will it be just him or will everyone else be coming along too? Let's find out. <laughs> It's an all-play gory game. So, it's off down the time sewer with a lot of you. Lead off, Morgan. See ya. See ya. Q-pip. Toodle-pip's off. Au revoir. Au revoir. Au revoir. King William the Conqueror came to power after the gory Battle of Hastings, and the funeral that marked the end of his reign was no less gory. His servants stole all his jewels, his body was so bloated it exploded, and the church caught fire. It's time to play Yakaroo. You are William's servants, and your challenge is to take as much of the old tyrant's treasure as possible and put it in your chest. All the treasure is colour-coded, and you must only take your own colour. Whoever collects the most pieces wins the year sphere, and you better be quick, because the church is going to burn down. And your time starts now. So here we go, then, with Yakaroo, the colour-coded treasure challenge that ends in gooiness. And look at that. September, off the mark. So too, Sol. Lovely stuff. And Morgan away. They're good thieves, these three, aren't they, They Rattus? certainly are. Yeah, lovely to see three such 
excellent thieves all at the top of their thieving game uh, and all working away feverishly on William the Conqueror's coffin there. All his treasure, of course, stolen by his servants and his actual funeral. And the other thing to note was that his guts exploded halfway through. And <laughs> I've got a feeling that might be about to happen here. But I'm rather hoping so, Dave. I don't think they know about it, which is excellent. Oh, dear me. Sol has put one in his chest there that wasn't brown, so that won't count. Obviously, stealing and nicking things is pretty bad on its own, but to do it from a dead man just seems downright disrespectful. Yes, even though he was a bit of a foul bully, he didn't deserve this. No one deserves this. This is naughty oh. behaviour. Oh, there oh. go his guts! He's exploded, and that has taken Morgan on the arm. And I think Sol got covered in it, but he barely looked up from his work. Didn't it's like he? It's like he gets covered in guts every day of the week. It's very close here, though, you know, Ratter. September and Morgan very close, and there's only two points separating all of them. So, very exciting with 30 seconds left. Now, that, September's put the wrong colour-coded stuff in her box there. That won't count. And as a result, Morgan's drawn level. Morgan's doing very well here. She's gathering a fair old booty, but she is also being very selective, isn't she? She's, she's having a look at what she fancies the look of. I, I think that's the mistake on this game. You've just got to take it all. You have, and the church is now very much on fire. They've got to get out of there quickly now. Morgan holding a one-point lead, but wait a minute, September could draw level. Here she does. That could be absolutely crucial, and it is. It is. September and Morgan have tied on six pieces of treasure each, and that means they're both going to get a year sphere. Back behind your podiums. How did you find that, Morgan? Did you yeah, I that? found it really fun. Did you? Have you done any thieving before, Sol? Oh, yeah. yeah. My sister, yeah. Does she know about that yet? Don't think so. She does now. <laughs> Never mind. How did you find that September? Quite easy, because I didn't get covered any guns whatsoever, so... You, you withdrew for that moment. <laughs> well done, everyone. September, if you could choose yours for me first, please. And, Morgan, help yourself to a year sphere. Lovely. Everyone has a year sphere. Time for the final round. Over to the gory grid one last time to find out what we've got. It's the Vicious Vikings. No quirky quiz in our final round. It's straight to our big all-play Viking endgame, and it is a scary one. So, everyone, get down that time to her. See ya. See ya. Bye. Bye. Auf Wiedersehen. Auf Wiedersehen. A multilinguist. Picture the scene. It's June the 8th, 793 AD, and another peaceful day begins in the tranquil island monastery of Lindisfarne. Suddenly, an unusual sound breaks the silence. It's the sound of a Viking chopping a monk in two. It's time to play Viking Attack. You are defenceless monks. Your only hope of survival is that the Vikings won't find you, so best not step on a squeaky floorboard. Your challenge is to find the one squeak-free path. Every time you step on a sinking, squeaky wooden panel, you'll be sent back to the start. Reach the end of the path and you are faced with two doors. Behind one is freedom. Behind the other is... I was betraying a Viking. Find him and you have to start all over again. The first person to escape wins the year sphere. Ready? Steady? Shh. Here we go then with Viking attack. What an appalling start. Everybody squeaked already. <laughs> That's woken up the monks at the back. There they are, our three custodian monks who stand at the back to ensure fair play at all times. And also they stand there because they have absolutely nothing better to do. Oh! There's that sinking feeling. Sol gets that familiar sinking feeling there. And that means he must return to the start of his leg. Oh, lovely. That was a lovely cross-leg warp there from Morgan. September, really thinking long and hard about this one. And Morgan is right at the end already. This is extraordinary. Oh, oh! And there's the frustration of the game in a nutshell. She's right back. She has to start again. But look at this, she's, she's back up there quickly. In fact, all three on a charge here. Oh, Morgan down, Sol down. What, September wasn't down? Well, that is peculiar. September didn't depress the board. She did not need to go back. Extraordinary. September is very close. Look at this. Look how close she is here. That's a solid one. Just needs a solid one. No, oh, she tried. She the tried there. there. Uh, did you notice what happened there? Uh, she thought if I skip across it, it won't register. Well, it will. And so will those two. Cheeky. 
very cheeky indeed, but they all know their paths now. It's really a case of who can remember best. She's over the end. Now, which door is it? Is she going to get freedom? Is she going to get the Viking? She's gone for the door on the right. Oh, it's the Viking! It's the Viking! It's the Viking. You better get Back's back, September. Beginning. Back to the beginning before he chops some part of you off. And Sol has to go back as well, which leaves Morgan our front runner. Can she get there? Can she get there? But September's coming back. Surely she'll choose the right door this time. She does. Here's the celebration. Fist bump, double turn, perfect celebrating at the end of a perfect game. And Morgan knows how close that was. Very well done. That was very exciting. September, help yourself to another year's fear, of course. <laughs> Superb. September, how did you find me? I found that really difficult because, I mean, my and Morgan's squeaks were quite similar, but so I kept going back on hers and she kept going back on mine, but it was fun in the end. Well done. Monks spent much of their time copying out books by hand, and monasteries were effectively huge libraries crammed full of hundreds of books. But not one on how to defend yourself in the event of a Viking attack. <laughs> Go figure. Time to count up those year spheres. And remember, AD years are added to your total and BC years are subtracted from it. So despite the fact that you've only got one, Morgan, you could still win this quite easily. OK, let's have a look at your year spheres then, September. Start off with that first one. 1453 AD, the end of the Hundred Years' War. A good start. Let's have a look at the second one. 1852 AD, London's first Flushing Loo was open to the public. Let's have a look at the third. 1170 AD, Archbishop Thomas Beckett murdered that year. Let's have a look at the fourth. 1789 AD, the French Revolution started. It's all down to this last fifth crucial sphere. What is it? 79 AD, the Colosseum opened in Rome. That means you have ended up with a massive total, September, of 6,343. Sol, it's going to be tricky to beat that, I'll be honest. Yeah. Let's have a look at that first one. Well, you started off badly in your quest for 6,000 points. You've got 9,000 BC. Stone Age man started using bows and arrows round about then. Let's have a look at the second one. 1666 AD, the Great Fire of London, of course, and that means that you have ended up with a score of minus 7,334. Morgan, one year sphere. It's going to be very tough to beat 6,343, but let's see what you've got. Oh, it's oh, 776 gosh. BC, the first ever ancient Olympics that year. But that is no consolation whatsoever. <laughs> All that means that today's winner with 6,343 points is September, who goes home with our star prize. And it really is the best prize that Rattus could possibly find, which gives you some idea of how little effort he puts into this task. <laughs> what have you got for us, my furry friend? Dave, today's prize just oozes class. <laughs> well, actually, it just oozes. Because <laughs> it's what Saxon peasants used to plaster their walls. It's pure pig poop. That's it, is it? Just a load of pig poop? Well, it's not just pig poop. Well, what else is there? I'm throwing in the bucket. Oof, unbelievable. Well, congratulations, <laughs> September. There you go, September. Well Thank done. Thank you. Sorry, it's, uh, well, sorry, it's a bucket of poo. It just remains for me to say thanks to our champion September, thanks to our runners-up Sol and Morgan, and no thanks whatsoever to Rattus. You're missing me already. I'm oh, not. You've been watching Gory Games. Goodbye. Was that show messy enough for you? Or would you have preferred a little more poo? Have you had your fill of blood, guts and gore? Or have we left you still wanting more? We'll keep watching. We'll be back again. With Horrible History's Gory Games. Horrible History's Gory Games. To all you CBBC Extra fans out there, come join us for more loopy madness by pressing red. We've got fantastic clips lined up for you, including Deadly 60 and the final episodes of Horrible Histories and Horrible Histories Gory Games. All you need to do is press red, scroll down that page and click on CBBC Extra. It's that easy. So remote to the ready, peeps, because it's extra time. A super celebration, all this week on CBBC.
Guys, it is super celebration here at CBBC because it is a live Jubilee concert tonight on BBC One. Hackers are a bit worried that the Queen is not a fan, so he's trying to sing a song to one of her backs. So before Hobbit Histories, it's time for this. Doggy Downloads Hacker Special. That's me, that is. I'm passing over live now to Hacker T Dog, who's live at Buckingham Palace. How's it going, my man? I'm just going to jaunty up this crown. It's not jaunty as I'd like it. I don't like that, it's too, it's not jaunty enough for the crown. No. Uh, i got some emails here. Owen, hi, you are right. Uh, flowers and roses I think I will bring. I hope she will be impressed with the songs that I'll sing. We've done that last time. Here's the actual one, it's from Deborah. Hi. BAFTA nominated. I'm so fluffy, I'm kind of like a rug. The Queen will love me so much, she'll ask for a hug. The Queen did treat you like a rug once, didn't she? Well, she once wiped her espadrilles on me. She did, she wrote welcome on your back, it was yeah. weird. <laughs> um, Emily, do you think she'll like my cheesy feet? And I can proudly say that they've never been beat. Anyone ever beat your cheesy feet? Brie. Oh, oh, tastes like feta. Molly, well done. Your lyrics are the favourite ones. Hacker's going to sing them in his song. You ready, mate? Thank you, Molly. Hit it! I should sing this song <laughs> to prove I'm fit for a queen. I'm without doubt the cutest dog you've ever seen. I'm amazing, the greatest dog in town.